the way. Uh, my name is Ben Allman. I work at Boku with Adam and Richard and a whole bunch of other guys who happen to be here also uh, making cool internet things. Uh, lately, I've been working on this uh, server side command line internet thing called Grunt uh, because I was getting really sick of writing really long Jake files and make files and experimenting with all of these things that I felt should kind of be trivial and, uh, and a thousand lines is a lot of code to share across. Well, let's see. GitHub slash cowboy. Uh, if the internet works, this is really awesome. But something like 50, 70 different projects. I know I'm kind of the exception with the amount of projects that I have, uh, as you can see there. Um, but uh, yeah, I've got a nine, 90, 78 repos. Yeah. So it was kind of getting unmanageable, and I decided to build a tool to help me do the things that I did all the time. Uh, you've, I'm sure, heard about it. I, I, every time I turn around, someone is saying grunt this or grunt that. Uh, people are actually using it. It's in beta right now, but we're actually uh, taking community contributions and suggestions, things like that, and making it better. So uh, <clears throat> like fair warning, right, 0.3.11 is something I just pushed today to help with the demo. Uh, based on some tweaks we made to the upcoming jQuery plugin site specification. I'm not going to actually show you how that works. Um, 0 0.4 is on the horizon. I've actually been doing a lot of work with a few other people on it. And uh, some things are going to break. I apologize for that. But they are actually almost entirely based on community suggestions. So that's a good thing. If you have suggestions, we've got a website. It's called GitHub. Go to the issues for Grunt see what's going on there. There's lots of docs, et cetera. Um, so anyways, Grunt is this tool that you run in the command line. It does a bunch of stuff. Uh, it will lint your files. It will test your files. OK, who here lints their JavaScript? OK, it's more than zero, so that's good. How about tests their JavaScript? Whoa, OK, nice. Yeah, no, no, how about actually test your JavaScript instead of just doing that to make me feel better? Okay, so the idea about, one of the things I really want to do with Grunt is make it easier for you to write unit tests. Like you're writing a, I use the jQuery plugin as the example because I write, have written so many of them, but you're writing like a jQuery plugin. You're doing a project and you want to get up and running and get some tests going and you're like, oh, I have to install what to do my test? How do I even do that? Start Googling it, it gets frustrating. Then you're like, okay, what's the directory structure like? What's everything like? What, like, all of this stuff, it adds up to be quite complicated. So in addition to doing all these tasks, like concatting and minning, minifying and linting, doing all these things to your JavaScript, I actually built in some basic uh, scaffolding templates with the init task, uh, which is extensible. And again, this is really early on, so we're working out ways to make it more awesome in the future. Again, you guys have suggestions. Let's hear them. But right now, there's some built-in um, init task. So let me just uh, go into a subdirectory here. Hopefully you guys can see my console. Uh, let's see. I'll make a directory called awesome plugin. I'll go into awesome plugin. I'll type g, uh, sorry, not, I'll type grunt init. Oops, that's int init. You can actually see uh, it's going to list like a handful of tasks that are available. Uh, there's one for like common JS, one for actually just creating a grunt file, one for creating a custom grunt plugin, et cetera. The one I'm going to run is jQuery right here. So grunt init colon jQuery. I'm actually going to zoom this in slightly so you can see it a little bit better. And what it's going to do is it's going to give me a little bit of a warning, heads up, hey, I'm new to this. Uh, there's actually rules that you need to kind of follow to make your jQuery plugin. But it's going to start asking you questions. It's going to figure out the default values for these questions based on your environment, like the name of the folder you're in. If it's already a Git repo that you've Git initted and added a remote to, it's going to use that origin remote as the what's going to pre-populate the, um, the question where it says, what's the repository URL? If not, it's going to try to guess it based on like the current directory name, your username, uh, any things you've stored in your Git config, et cetera. So I could override these. Um, but I'll just leave it as the default awesome plugin project title. It's going to guess it because the jQuery uh, plugins repository will actually allow you to display the pro project title. Description. I'm going to actually change this to the super best jQuery plugin ever. With some a little emphasis. Version. Guessing the GitHub repo repository, the home page, the issues tracker, all based on your environment. You can pick some licenses. 
what are the ones that are built in? I've actually just got GPL and MIT built in, but you could add your own. Um, author name, no, that's gonna be Cowboy Ben Allman. Uh, I'll set none for my email and benalman.com. You can actually store the, res the, the values for these things in a JSON file that I've got somewhere in the doc, so you don't have to fill them in every time manually. Required jQuery version. Do you need to make any changes? No, enter. Okay, so it's just actually scaffolded out all of those files for me. You can see that it's uh, <coughs> written a grunt file as the first thing. It's built out uh, in the libs folder, uh, jQuery.js, a jQuery loader thing that I just added today. Some QUnit stuff for unit testing, a readme with some basic stuff already put in. And it's actually created the source files based on the name of the plugin and uh, unit testing files, a couple license files. If I do a tree, you can kind of see the directory structure right there. But uh, right now, I could just literally run grunt. And it will, uh, there's a warning right now, you'll see this path exists tank. It's because node 0 0.8 came out like two days ago and uh, they, they deprecated something. So that'll be fixed really soon, but it wasn't fixed this morning. I didn't quite have the time. Uh, it's just a warning anyways. <laughs> but you can see that it's gonna lint your files. Hey, lint free, you didn't have any problems. Uh, all the assertions that I had in the built-in sample unit tests work perfectly fine because you know I want you to feel good when you install it. Uh, when you actually start writing your own unit test, you'll, you can feel bad then. Um, it'll concat the files, adding like a banner um, to the head, like a comment kind of thing, based on some cool stuff I'm gonna show you. And it's gonna minify, you can see like the uncompressed size, the compressed size, uh, gzipped, and then just minified. if you really care about those values. Honestly, I don't really care, but the jQuery guys, they use Grunt and they really, really care. So they have green and red and all kinds of different colors to help them feel good or bad about what they've done. So um, let's see, if I were to open this right now, just open the folder that I'm in, take a look at the grunt file. <coughs> so grunt file, you guys read that? Yeah, you can read that, okay. So um, the this is basically, it's a, instead of making your grunt file, the configuration for this thing be a JSON file, like your package JSON, I made it be JavaScript. It, it kind of feels like JSON because you got objects with properties and stuff like that, but it is JavaScript, so if I wanted to build properties dynamically in a for loop based on files that exist in my source directory, I could just use grunt.file expand files, source slash star.js, and now I'd have a list of all the files in there and I could dynamically add things. I mean, it's, it's just JavaScript. You're in Node, you have a lot of things available and a pretty complete API for getting around the file system with what, what's built into Grunt. Here, I'm just using some standard stuff. I'm not doing any crazy hackery. By default, when you init a jQuery plugin, you're gonna get, you know, like a sample banner. See how it's using these underscore templates built in. See how it's using PKG. Um, so package.title, package.name, that actually refers to this package, json colon awesome plugin .jQuery .json. Now this is uh, <coughs> one of the details we were hammering out last night uh, about the jQuery plugin site, which actually feels really, really solid right now. When you create a jQuery plugin to be uploaded in the jQuery plugin site, which is right around the corner, I am hoping, um, you you just uh, you, you the instead of using a package JSON file for your plugin, you'd actually use like foo dot jQuery.json in the root of your repo for if your plugin's name was foo. So for example, my plugin, if I look at awesome-plugin.jQuery.json, awesome-plugin is the name. The title is awesome plugin. The description, all these things you can recognize, they're what I entered in when it asked the questions up front. Grunt will generate this file for you automatically. Now, right now, I've only got this much for like basic node or common JS things or jQuery plugins. It's really basic right now, but I'm gonna be working on more init templates and if you guys, you can make your own, that kind of thing. Backbone Boilerplate, for example, is something that uh, Tim Brannion has worked on that has a whole bunch of custom tasks and init stuff, so you could init a whole project. Uh, oh, what's the thing, um, Yeoman, that was just announced that Google I.O. actually uses Grunt under the hood. Paul Irish was like, yes, yeah, so I'm working on this little project that uses Grunt. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's, that's cool. Do you need any help? He's like, no, I'm good. Um, and then like two days ago, I'm like, yo man. And I look at it and I play the video and I'm like, oh my God, that's Grunt. <laughs> so uh, it's just, he's kind of created a wrapper around Grunt where he has a whole bunch of custom tasks and uh, we're actually working together uh, once he gets back from his super extended vacation to uh, make it even better there. He's got a lot of great ideas uh, about those init templates and stuff. Um, <coughs> so. I'll generate this package JSON, uh, sorry, the jQuery plugin JSON file for you automatically. You've got the version, you've got all this stuff, and 
once you commit this and like push it to GitHub, you could basically just tell the jQuery plugin site to look at that repo and it will just use it at that point. I mean, it's the, the process is gonna be very simple. If you weren't using Grunt, you could just write this by hand, it's fine, but Grunt will kind of facilitate that for you. So what's cool about this JSON file is you store all of your project metadata in this JSON file, and uh, instead of duplicating that project data in your Grunt file to like generate your banner, you just import it here. That's just gonna import the thing as raw JSON, like as a, now it's a jQuery object in your config, and you can access it in your templates by just saying, whatever property it was in, pkg, okay, pkg.title or name. That's kind of saying like, oh, if I didn't have a title defined, it would just default back to the name. The version, because title was optional, right? Uh, today, so it's gonna format the current date using like an ISO standard. It's gonna add all this stuff in. I'm using underscore templates, so you can kind of, underscore is built in, you can go to town with it. Um, <coughs> so that's a banner that will be used when I concat files. It's gonna take that banner, it's gonna concat it to my source file that has its banner stripped from it. Now this is just the way I did this, but this is really flexible. You could totally write all of your own stuff if you didn't, and if you, we'll, we'll take a look at the jQuery and the jQuery UI built-in grunt files. They're, they're like hundreds of lines long. They've gone crazy. Um, so when I run grunt, it's going to take this, it's gonna see, look at package name, it's gonna look for that named file in the source directory, and it's gonna build that same named file into the distribution directory. So I can see the source file is this. I have. I've gotten the habit of putting comments with licenses at the top of all of my source code files, period. Um, but when I actually distribute the file, I'll strip those comments and put a much more compact kind of distribution comment with a date and a version number on it. I don't want that really in my source. This is just something I've developed because I write a lot of code uh, that I share. Um, so here's a sample plugin. This is just the default stock plugin. We've got like a jQuery object method awesome, it'll set the HTML to awesome on all the elements. We've got a static method that just returns awesome. A custom selector, don't use custom selectors, they're slow, but hey, if you wanna write one, there's one. Um, so this is the cool thing, right? Uh, I can, um, I'll just run grunt watch, and that'll actually kinda watch for changes in the file system. And I'll go into my, uh, what, what that is, uh, let's look at the grunt file again. Uh, we'll see that the grunt watch file is going to look at whatever I'd set up for lint, and when any of them changes, it's gonna run the lint task and the Q unit test task. So let's poke around, let's see what I've got for lint. It looks at the grunt file changed, anything in the source directory or any of its subdirectories, and the test directory. So if any of those change, it's gonna rerun the lint and Q unit test. So let me go to my test and say, okay, awesome plugin test.js. I've got a little sample, because you know not everyone has all this memorized. Okay, so, uh, is awesome. It should actually, let's say, should be very thoroughly awesome. Give it some more exclamation points, and I'll save it. And we'll see that my code actually breaks now. It's running in the background, it's just waiting for me to save files and change. The actual is awesome, it's expecting that. So let's fix that. I've updated my tests because that's the way things should behave. Now let's actually update my code. And I don't know if you guys have ever done this, but it's called like test-driven development, and it's really not that hard if you have a system set up to automatically run your unit tests when you change things. So, awesome, let's see. Um, for, now let's say I forget a semicolon, right? I save it, oh, it actually tells me that missing semicolon, it shows exactly where it was missing, the what line of what file. So I'll go in and fix that, save it. Now it actually passed the lint, but it ran QUnit, okay, they all passed, all the assertions passed. So like you can get into a development process like this where you, you know, you would blow away all my little boilerplate here and add your own stuff, but you can see how it works. It's, and, and these are jQuery plugins, so they're using the DOM, it's running jQuery and QUnit under the hood, but those require DOM, uh, they require the window, the document, all that kind of stuff. Um, and because Node doesn't have a document or a window because it's not a browser, you can't run your DOM stuff in Node. So what I've actually done is uh, made a dependency on this really awesome tool called PhantomJS. It also runs on the server. Um, you would just install it. There's like some downloads. I've got links in my FAQs on the, on, in the documentation. And it just runs standalone. You can give it JavaScript files. People use it for scraping websites. But the whole idea is it's actually got a headless QUnit browser running. And uh, <coughs> what I do is I actually develop the mechanism for communicating between uh, between Grunt in Node and Phantom, which is a totally separate process, and QUnit to run your tests and have them report to Grunt and like log errors or uh, 
have, uh, give the appropriate exit code so you could actually use it for like continuous integration kind of things. Like we're talking headless like browser WebKit testing. So that's what's actually running under the hood here. QUnit files is actually running uh, the, the unit tests in QUnit, in PhantomJS, in WebKit. Um, so if I, if I look at the folder structure again, and I'll just open uh, test slash awesome plugin dot HTML, we'll see it's just the QUnit, it's just the, the page like you'd expect. And if I break my unit tests here by not returning the correct number of exclamation points, you'll see that that fails. Just the same as grunt will fail on the exact same thing. So when I fix this, you'll see that passes and grunt passes. So it's really, they're really doing the same thing. Now, running it in the command line is no substitute for running it in all the browsers you need to support, right? But like, it's a good first step. It helps you get to the point where you're like, okay, everything works, I'm happy, now let's start testing in the browser. You take this thing, you open it in a lot of other browsers. Um, <coughs> do your testing. So one thing I just added yesterday, uh, no, this morning, I was sitting with Scott Gonzalez. <laughs> it's, you know, it's all blurry. I did a training before the conference. I've been working on this. I've been, I don't know, just lazing about. And uh, so it's, um, it's, you know, I've had a few ideas over the last few days. So. <coughs> um, they, they, Scott was doing this in, uh, in something in jQuery, and it was something I actually fooled around with a while back, but then forgot about. If you, uh, right now, this will use the jQuery that's built in into uh, the jQuery subdirectory, which is, I've got 172 in there right now. But if you were to do like question mark version equals latest, it's actually going to load the version. Um, <coughs> uh, oh, sorry, jQuery equals latest. Thanks, Scott. Okay, let's take a look. Pew. What am I doing wrong? Um, let's make sure I'm using the right, no, that works. jQuery, oh, that is the latest. Okay, okay, let me do a non-latest, 1.4.0, that is absolutely not the latest. Oh, you know what, and it's 1.4, not 1.4.0, pet peeve of mine. Okay, there it is. Um, it's version 1.4. You might be asking why I did underscore uh, dollar sign to access jQuery. Um, what, we were just having a conversation about this this morning. Uh, when you're testing your plugin, you shouldn't be using a dollar sign. You should be using jQuery. What if the user's in a no conflict environment and dollar sign is MooTools or prototypes? So you shouldn't be using dollar sign in your jQuery plugin. You actually, after the plugin is loaded, you shouldn't be even accessing jQuery again. You should be using an iffy where you're passing jQuery in so that you've kind of like locked into the version. So if someone does no conflict afterwards and removes both jQuery and dollar sign, it should still work. So what I've added into all of the files that are generated by this init template is this window dot underscore dollar sign equals jQuery no conflict true. Because you're really testing your plugin and this is how you should be testing it because I said so. Um, <coughs> so you don't have to take my word for it, okay, but I've made a few jQuery plugins. So what I did is actually stored a reference to that in under, window dot underscore dollar sign, so if you have to hack around with jQuery, you still have access to it, but you can really test your plugin. So uh, we just added that uh, this morning. So here, it's, again, QUnit, uh, headless, in the browser, whatever, you have a lot of flexibility. Uh, by default, it's gonna use the built-in jQuery, but if you wanna link to the latest, if it's a new one, you don't have to update your repo anymore, just update your link to have question mark jQuery equals latest, and it'll pull it off of uh, the jQuery CDN. So that's all built in there, transparently, I've commented everything. So that's like, that's pretty basic. I mean, I could go in and hack the hell out of the, uh, the, the, the grunt file to show you how I would like, you know, I could store things in variables, I can test different things. There are a lot of examples for that. So, I mean, I'm halfway through my talk, so I wanna show you some other stuff that's kinda cool. But this, I wanted to give you an idea of like, hey, if you're creating a jQuery plugin, I'm really digging this workflow. It's making my life a lot easier. Um, so maybe it will also make your life easier. Also, if you have any suggestions or additions or anything that you want to contribute, file an issue, talk to me, find me afterwards. We're actually going to have a little grunt hack session uh, in the breakout room, I think at 4 o'clock I signed up for it. So if you, if you want to talk more about grunt then, by all means. Um, <coughs> so that is like a sample jQuery plugin, grunt init colon jQuery. Um, we're at 03.11 now. 04 is gonna have a bunch of stuff rewritten. The grunt file is actually gonna change from grunt.js to gruntfile.js because some people on Windows have to type grunt.cmd instead of grunt. Well, this will fix that problem, et cetera. There's a few things, but for the 0.5 release, I really wanna rewrite the init task to make scaffolding way more powerful and, and flexible. So that's a big thing that I have a, a to do. You know, I used to be this guy who wrote jQuery plugins. Now I'm this guy who maintains Grunt. I, I really haven't got to use it in any of my plugins yet, just a few little sample ones. Uh, maybe someday. 
Um, <coughs> so what I wanted to show you guys is um, how, uh, just a little snippet of how jQuery uses Grunt. Uh, if you ch and I cloned this ahead of time because like it sat on like it, I had to control C and restart cloning it like five times, jQuery and jQuery UI because the, the network or something. But I've got it, I've cloned it, get status, there's nothing to commit, so it's completely clean. So if I, uh, the first thing you do is run npm install, and that would actually look at the package JSON file that is in there. That's one thing I didn't mention. Uh, when you create a plugin with, uh, when you create a plugin with the, the Grunt init now, not only do you get that jQuery specific JSON file with all the metadata, you also get a package JSON file that just has enough information for you to say npm install and it will download the latest version of Grunt and you can put like if you have other Grunt plugins that you use, you can put them in there. That way anyone contributing just goes into the root of your project, types npm install and then they can just start running Grunt. So that's, that's the idea there. Um, and I've <laughs> I actually modified the README markdown. If I pull it up in browser, well, it's a little big, but the whole idea is I've added a whole section on installing Grunt and installing PhantomJS. So if you make a jQuery plugin, this documentation comes for free in your plugin, uh, among other things. Like not only is it pre-filled with your title and description, and it points to like you know your distribution files and stuff like that, so you don't have to like do all that manually. I mean, yes, you have to write your documentation. Yes, you have to link to your examples and have a release history. Um, but I, I put in default information for those for your license for contributions to help you out to get to make it easier for people to contribute. Because <laughs> you, know, you uh, that people always asking questions about how do I get started is kind of a pain. So um, <coughs> that's that's just all in there. Um, so. Uh, Okay, back to uh, jQuery. If I, I did, already did an npm install, because it would probably hang and uh, I wouldn't be able to finish the talk. Um, and I say talk loosely, because I'm just free form doing whatever. So I'll run grunt <coughs> here, and you'll see it actually goes through a whole bunch of stuff. It's gonna lint a whole bunch of different files. It's gonna minify, you'll see the minified. It actually runs a compare size, and uh, they've got it set up where they, uh, they, they you see what master is, and then uh, you, you run it on any branch, and you can actually see the delta between what master was and what your branch is, so, so that Rick Waldron can sit there and be like, I totally saved three bytes. High fives. And you guys laugh. That's like literally all day long, every day at Boku. <laughs> literally. <laughs> okay, almost every day. And it's awesome. It's great. But <laughs> like he's like, green, yes, I saved bytes. It's, yeah. Um, so, uh, the, you know, jQuery likes to not be any bigger than it has to be, right? So, um, so there's some basic stuff in here. And uh, one thing I wanted to do is jQuery actually has all of these unit tests. Uh, and the unit tests, uh, they all run in QUnit normally in the browser. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to edit uh, the index.html file and the grunt file. Okay, so index.html, the first thing I'm going to do is remove the Ajax tests because those require a very specially set up server that's PHP and all this stuff, and I'm not doing that for this example, so goodbye Ajax tests. Um, and then I'm in the grunt file. I'm gonna look, oh look, I wrote that, cool. Um, let's see, I'm gonna go down to where they've set up the QUnit test, and I'm actually gonna tell that to run from localhost host colon 8,000, I'll spell it right maybe. Um, and then I'm gonna set up a custom task that's effectively an alias task. So grunt dot register task test. And I'm gonna, what test is gonna do is it's going to run that server task which is gonna start a static server on port 8,000 in the root of the repo and then it's gonna run QUnit so that the QUnit files can actually run from localhost instead of from the file system because there are certain requirements that jQuery has. Um, and uh, actually what that's gonna do is the server task will only run as long as QUnit is running. Once, once QUnit stops and Grunt's done, the server will stop. For what I wanna do, I'm actually just gonna make a custom little wait task. Um, you can create alias tasks where you say test will run all of those tasks. You can give them options. You can see that they've actually got a few over here. By default, Grunt will do a whole lot of stuff. Um, but I'm gonna say like grunt.register task. I'm gonna call this wait. Uh, and that's just going to be a function that when it executes is going to call a method that's built in that just tells it to wait. And when, if you'd say ver done equals this.async, and when your task was actually done asynchronously, you'd invoke done, and it would continue on. It's just a pattern I developed here. 
Oh, I do need a comma. Thank you. I mean, when I linted it, you know, it would tell me that probably. But um, okay, so what this is going to do is it's going to run uh, the static server. It's going to run QUnit, and then it's just going to wait. And the reason I'm doing this is because while I'm running uh, the tests in the command line, I'm going to also run them in the browser side by side because it amuses me to do so. Grunt test, I'm going to say uh, verbose, and I'm going to force it. So if there are errors, which there will be, because I know there will be, uh, because PhantomJS is not perfect, it's just pretty awesome. Um, OK, so that should run. We'll run the test here and here simultaneously. And uh, you'll see them running in Grunt on the left. You'll see them running in my version of Chrome on the right. <laughs> uh, there, there will be errors here or there. I, the reason though, there'll be an error on the right-hand side is because uh, I'm not running in incognito mode. Some, some of my in extensions are conflicting with it, which will break jQuery unit tests. And the reason things fail on the left is because I think uh, PhantomJS has a problem with uh, parse XML. <laughs> It's, uh, we're, they're racing right now. You can see them race. So grunt running unit tests in QUnit through PhantomJS 1.6 on the left, and QUnit running in Chrome version 9000 or whatever it is on the right. Uh, I, don't, I don't even keep track anymore. So actually, they're, they're both really neck and neck at this point. <laughs> the left-hand side, grunt is actually slightly, maybe slightly faster, but I did get a slight head start. So really, really equal. OK, so the left is done, and the right is just about to be done. So you can see on the left-hand side, one of 6,361 jQuery assertions failed. That means 6,360 assertions actually passed running uh, headless in PhantomJS on jQuery. So that's pretty awesome. Um, I'm, not, I'm not looking for applause. I'm just, that made me feel really good. I was like, oh, sweet. I, this is actually like legitimate. And on the right-hand side, one of them passed, and that's, again, be, uh, one of them failed. <laughs> passed. They all passed, except for one, simply because uh, I'm, not, I'm not running with no extensions. I wasn't running an incognito. Um, <coughs> so I had to remove Ajax to make this work, because Ajax requires a PHP server that's configured in a very specific way. But uh, down the road, they've actually been talking about just writing all the server stuff in Node, so you don't even need PHP. It's just all straightforward JavaScript. That's down the road if they do it. Um, but the whole idea here is I'm running, I'm actually like linting all of jQuery's uh, unit tests in QUnit, which it just makes me, it feels like it's, okay, this is a legitimate way to run your unit tests. This will work in most scenarios. Interestingly enough, if I was to run all these unit tests without Ajax uh, from like a file colon slash slash URL, which is what it does by default, uh, it, it doesn't work with offsets for some reason. So. Uh, there's a little bit of documentation about running your stuff from a local host server in the QUnit and server tasks in the documentation, but you might run into weird issues if you're running from file colon slash slash URLs instead of localhost or something. And your localhost doesn't have to be like something that you started with Grunt. Your localhost could be a web server that you're running in any other, th you could be running a PHP server, or you could be running uh, like a Ruby server or whatever. You just tell Grunt what to do and you, you figure out those little details. So <coughs> that was jQuery. Um, jQuery UI, I've got it running around here somewhere. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, built into Grunt, it's just a connect server. It's a static server, super basic. You could write your own. I mean, you just saw me do register task wait. That just did something. I mean, you could do register task and just write whatever the hell you want in that function. Um, there's a lot of Grunt methods that are documented. Go to town, do file manipulation, do, I don't know, start servers, communicate with other things. I mean, th I'm just to give you an idea. Like, uh, I've only got it at a fiddle right now. We're working on the Grunt website. Uh, there are, let's see, I'm doing a JSON search through a proxy here. 44 Grunt plugins currently in NPM, uh, and they do all kinds of different things. This list is available in one of my issues as a little side note that says, hey, when the website is done, let's add this. Um, so it's not really published anywhere yet, but it will be coming soon. We're actually working on the website. Uh, <coughs> let's see, that was. Let me go into jQuery UI, because I thought this was actually really cool. Uh, now, I could run grunt right here, but it's actually, uh, or I did an NPM install, uh, but it actually gave me an error because uh, in their package JSON file, Scott, take note, uh, in your package JSON file, you actually put a hard dependency on version 0.3.9 by putting a tilde here that says version 0.3.9 uh, to any version up to 0.4.0, and I've released 0.311, so I kind of needed to do that. 
Um, but if I were to run grunt at this point, uh, it's going to lint a whole bunch of things. Uh, it's probably going to build build a whole, oh, it's run unit tests in QUnit on like all of the jQuery UI stuff, which is pretty neat. Um, I mean, again, this it takes a little while to run these tests. Yes, I mean, because they're doing like event interaction, and all this crazy stuff or whatever. But like, you know, you can you can do it. Um, it's as you saw, it's the same amount of time it's going to take to run those tests in the browser. It's just, you know, less uh, command tabbing and clicking for you. Um, let's see. <coughs> Give this a sec. So this runs through all the tests, done without errors. Great. Yay, jQuery UI. Um, if I were to run grun build, I think it is, this actually goes through a, a whole bunch of stuff that they set up to like create like <laughs> a lot of files. But you can really hack around custom. There's a lot of command line options. Um, grunt dash dash help will give you a lot of, look at, they've got a lot of custom tasks with no names, but that's okay because they document them, hopefully. Uh, so there's a lot of like alias. This release CDN will release themes, copy to CDN, minified, internationalized, internationalized, minified, images, themes, like it does, it generates MD5 checksums. Like it, they, they've actually got it doing a lot. And if we were to take a quick peek at the, uh, the grunt file, we're going to see like do, 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 lines 200, 300. But you know what? It's just JavaScript. And the one thing that was really cool is that um, they told me, and I believe them, that they were using Ant before. And for them, this is way faster than Ant, which is pretty awesome. Now, I'm not saying Grunt is faster than Ant in general. I'm saying for them, they say it was way faster than Ant. And, and they enjoyed writing it. Instead of parsing XML files, they're writing JavaScript. So, um, And who knows? They could also parse XML files using JavaScript if they wanted to. I don't know. Um, so that's jQuery UI using it. I uh, actually using it. We use it uh, in our trainings now to start web servers, like local servers, and to lint files. So like when we've got people working on examples, hey, every time you edit your example, see the thing pass or fail, and you can like get used to that workflow, etc. Um, and uh, let's see, what else do I have going on here? We've got Grunt on uh, on Twitter, GruntJS. Websites in progress, GruntJS.com with an actual brand, that G is not the official logo. That was just something I did really quickly to, to not have the default avatar there. Um, let's see. Grunt, <coughs> I use Grunt for making jQuery plugins, common JS modules, node modules. Like I like make little utilities. I don't build a lot of websites these days. I mean, I do, I keep up. Like I work with stuff, I, I make some web apps, stuff like that, but that's not really what I'm doing most of the time. So as a result, I don't have any built-in tasks in Grunt that say minify CS, CSS, uh, concat, C well, you could concat anything with the concat task, but I don't do like less processing. Um, the thing is, like again, if you go to that jQuery, uh, um, the Grunt plugins list, uh, there are like less and Jasmine and Jade and Hamel and uh, Mocha and all these different things built by other people. There's a Grunt Contrib plugin that's uh, actually being maintained by uh, Chris Talkington and Ty Tyler Kellen, and uh, they're actually doing a lot of work to like add a whole bunch of functionality into a single plugin that you can add. Um, we're looking to like make useful plugins for the stuff that I don't do personally, but a lot of people want to do, because we don't want you to have to rewrite like every single task every time, every different person. We don't want a million different tasks for the same thing over and over again. So we're trying to curate some. Uh, if you want to participate in that, find me in the Grunt channel, uh, pound grunt on irc.freenode.net, um, and let's talk about it if you have any ideas. Um, but the, the idea here is that if you do CSS stuff, just install the plugin. You'd do an npm install grunt-css. You'd add it in your package JSON file. And then in your grunt file, just like they're doing in, uh, in jQuery UI or jQuery or whatever, you would just say grunt.load npm tasks grunt-css. And that would load grunt-css as a local npm module. That's all you have to do. And then all your user or all whoever's dealing with your project or your site or whatever has to do is just do an npm install and then grunt. It just it just does all that stuff for you. So um, that's pretty much what I've got. Uh, there's there's a few resources. If you have any questions, find me like anytime. On Twitter, I'm Cowboy. I work at Boku. On GitHub, I'm Cowboy. 
uh, and I'm just around. And so feel free to talk to me if you have more questions or specific things about Grunt that you want answered. Uh, meet me at, at the breakout. I think it's 4 o'clock uh, this afternoon. So uh, thank you very much. I, I hope it was helpful. Thank you.